cells of the immune system dendritic cells the dendritic cells are named so because the cell has many extensions and these extensions look look like the dendrites of the neurons and that is how the name dendritic cells has been uh, come up now let us look at the learning outcomes of this session and this session will kind of give you an overview of uh, dendritic cells because um, there is a lot that is known but there is so much more to be known about dendritic cells and it slowly and gradually is becoming a central point between uh, innate immunity and uh, adaptive immunity so let us look at the learning outcomes of the session due to the stellate shape and immunogenicity these cells were named as dendritic cells they are present in lymphoid as well as non lymphoid organs dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells with the ability to activate naive t cells to mediate both humoral mediated as well as cell mediated immunity there are various types of dendritic cells based on not just their location but also based on the distinct receptors and the functions thereof dendritic cells regulation determines between telerogenic and sorry tolerogenic and inflammatory states that means that uh, the dendritic cells have a regulatory role for immune responses now let us look at the development and maturation of the dendritic cells so dendritic cells also arise from hematopoietic stem cells which lead to what is called as multipotent progenitor cells in the bone marrow that forms common lymphoid progenitor cells from common lymphoid progenitor cells they form um, mon uh, monocyte uh, dendritic polygenitors and from that point onwards you can get a monocyte and then monocyte itself can differentiate finally when it reaches the periphery of the uh, uh, body or the organism to monocyte derived dendritic cells or it can form pre dendritic cells which can then either go into lymphoid tissue and act as dendritic cells or they can go into non lymphoid tissue and act as dendritic cells so this is one kind cdc is one kind of dendritic cell you can also have pdc this is the second type of dendritic cell so basically what we understand is that there are different types of dendritic cells possible maybe the origin is a single cell but when that uh, due to its exposure to different cytokines or different micro environments uh, they lead to formation of uh, myeloid stem cells and from myeloid stem cells you can have uh, langerhans uh, uh, dendritic cells or you can have interstitial dendritic cells from monocytes you can have myeloid dendritic cells or monocyte derived dendritic cells from lymphatic stem cells you can have plasmocyte uh, plasmocytoid uh, cells so that is what is pdc and you have precursor killer cells as well these these dendritic cells produce gamma interferon so what one observes is as you can see that as you have the progenitor cells getting differentiated into respective dendritic cells um you can have differences in the cell surface receptors present on the dendritic cells and uh, thereby you can have slight differences in their functions as well now when you look at uh, dendritic cells they can exist as immature dendritic cell or they can exist as or they get activated to form mature dendritic cells now when dendritic cells are immature that means they have not yet encountered a pathogen or they have not been stimulated by uh, some uh, you know cytokine or some other molecule then what is observed is that the expression of co stimulatory molecules on these dendritic cells is very low mhc2 expression is very low we all know that dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells and so they ought to be expressing mhc class 2 in order to exhibit the antigenic peptides on the surface so that also is less secretion of pro inflammatory uh, cytokines is less in fact it gives rise to more of anti inflammatory cytokines like for example il10 is synthesized which can suppress the immune response phagocytic capacity however is high now this is important because immature dendritic cells have to be ready to take up an antigen 
and being part of the innate immune system they are supposed to be encountering and eliminating antigens so its phagocytic capacity is high but other than that you can see all other activities are less the ccr7 this is also a uh, a uh, a cytokine receptor a chemokine receptor which is present in many immune cell subsets and that expression is also low glycolysis is also low so in fact immature dendritic cells are considered to be in what is called as a tolerogenic dendritic or they are considered to be in a tolerogenic uh, state which means that uh, a tolerogenic dendritic cell is responsible for keeping the immune system less active or uh, suppressed and uh, these tolerogenic dendritic cells are more associated with homeostasis of not just immune cells but other cell types as well and it is also responsible for t cell energy now t cell energy the word energy is basically trying to say that t lymphocytes are in their least active state that is they are suppressed in their uh immunogenic activity and therefore you will find that due to the tolerogenic uh, uh, uh dendritic cells the t cells do not get activated and they remain in a state where the immune system is suppressed now this is helpful in terms of the fact that if uh, there are self antigens then the self antigens then the immune system should not be uh, active against the self antigens and that's when t cell energy would help so effectively what has been observed is that there is immunotolerance because of dendritic cells and that is more related to the immature dendritic cells however when these dendritic cells encounter pathogens or they are stimulated by cytokines or they are able to recognize um pathogen associated molecular patterns or damage associated molecular patterns through toll like receptors etc then they get active and become mature dendritic cells and these mature dendritic cells would have increased co stimulatory molecules would have increased mhc2 expression which have uh, would have increased secretion of pro inflammatory cytokines would have however less phagocytic capacity would have increased chemokine receptor 7 type expression would also have an increase in glycolysis so all of these would tend to make the mature dendritic cells go into what is called as the inflammatory state and this inflammatory state is able to activate the knife t cells to give rise to an immune response so therefore where here there was suppression of the immune system here you have the activation of immune system happening now what is interesting to note is that when you have the den uh, dendritic cells encountering antigens now depending on whether the antigens are foreign antigens or they are self antigens the dendritic cells would either tend to go to tolerogenic state or they would go to uh, inflammatory state and it is not just its encountering with the antigens per se but it is also due to its communication with different bystander cells like for example immune cells epithelial cells monocytes macrophages all of these can uh, release cytokines of their own which can influence the dendritic cell now the influence is such that um, they are giving rise to signals of whether it has to uh, promote cd4 plus t cells formation or not moreover the binding of the migratory dendritic cells to antigen would also lead to expression of integrins and chemokine receptor due to which the migratory dendritic cells would move from tissues to or non lymphoid tissues to lymphoid tissues and once it goes to lymph nodes then what is very clear is that the migratory uh, dendritic cell would present the antigens through mhc class 2 and that mhc class 2 will be will be uh, recognized by the knife cd4 plus t cells and that gets active so uh, this is how uh the dendritic cells can move from non lymphoid tissue to lymph lymph node to basically uh, amplify the immune response depending on what is the antigen that it has got exposed to so uh what is very 
clearly understood is that when dendritic cells get active, get mature, they definitely are able to activate knife T cells. But depending on the microenvironment or the chemokines or the cytokines present, they are able to activate the knife T cells not just into one subset of the T cells, but different subsets. So it can give rise to T regulatory uh, cells, activate the T cells to form T regulatory cells through TGF beta, that is tumor growth factor uh, beta, or if if the cytokines are IL-12, then Th1 subset is formed, which in turn is able to produce uh, gamma interferon and TNF-alpha. Or if it is IL-4, it is able to activate the T cells to form Th2 cell types, which in turn release IL-4, IL-5, IL-13. Or it can activate and form Th17, which can activate further mucosal immunity. So you can see how... Um, what are the circumstances in which the dendritic cells are and which are the antigens to which it has bound? Based on that, you can have the activation of knife T cells into different subsets of T cells. So interestingly, therefore, the dendritic cell, which is part of the innate immunity, can recognize, say, for example, a bacteria through what is called as pathogen-associated molecular pattern receptors, and uh, it is able to internalize or signal transduction goes into, uh, uh, or because of signal transduction, the dendritic cell is able to engulf the bacteria, um, break it down into different fragments, and those fragments are then expressed on the surface through MHC class 2 because it is an antigen presenting cell. And those antigenic peptides that have been uh, expressed through MHC class 2 can bind to the knife T cells through the T cell receptors and co stimulatory molecules. And then the knife T cells, in presence of different cytokines and chemokines, depending on what the dendritic cell is producing, can get differentiated into e either into uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes or Th1 subsets or Th2 subsets or Th17 subsets or T regulatory cell. And eventually also Th2, if formed, can also give rise to B cells. So what is very clear is that the dendritic cell is a messenger between innate immunity and adaptive immunity. The presence of an antigen detected by the dendritic cell and presented to the knife T cell gives rise to adaptive immunity. So whatever T cells are formed or B cells are formed, these will produce an immune response specifically against this particular antigen. So that is a very important role that dendritic cells have to play. Now, like mentioned, depending on what is the antigenic type, you can have a different subset of T cells getting activated. So if you have bacteria, protozoa, viruses, or even self antigens, then you have the Th1 subset of T cells getting activated. That gives rise to gamma interferon, and gamma interferon in turn can activate macrophages, lead to pathogen lysis, production of inflammatory medias, mediators, so basically phagocytosis. When you have helminths, venom, or allergens present, then Th2 subset is activated, which can give rise to IL-4, IL-5, IL-13. IL-4 can give rise to uh, um, a class switch to IgE, and we all know that IgE on mast cells is able to uh, degranulate and uh, release toxic granules that can cause allergy and also lead to mucus production. When there is fungi or bacteria, uh, exogenous fungi or bacteria, or when there are self antigens, then Th17 can also get activated or formed, and these can give rise to uh, mucosal immunity and lead to the uh, antimicrobial peptides formed, which can ultimately eliminate the fungi and the bacteria. If you have harmless antigens, then of course the T cells get activated to form T regulatory cells, which in turn can release IL 10. CTLA-4, and these chemokines are responsible for uh, immunosuppressing uh, the immune cells. So the dendritic cells become more immunotolerant. They release cytokines that lead to T-cell energy. So that is something that is happening when you have a harmless antigen or also a self-antigen. When it's a foreign antigen, of course, you have the T-follicular helper cells getting activated, and those 
would get activated in the germ uh, would lead to germinal center formation where you can have class switching happening such a way that the antibodies that are formed are very specific for the foreign antigen so these are different ways by which the dendritic cells are able to activate naive t cells to form different subsets of t cells interestingly what has been also found is a phenomenon in which the dendritic cell licensing for cross priming is possible because of chemokines and these chemokines are uh, formed or the signal transduction that happens is because of interactions that happen between dendritic cell and cd4 plus t helper cells and the toll like receptors so these interactions where you have the t cell receptor of the cd4 plus t helper cell bind to the antigenic peptide associated with mhc class 2 we know that dendritic cells are antigen presenting cell so it will always have an antigen pe peptide on its mhc class 2 which can be recognized by the t cell receptors or cd4 plus t helper cells and you also have the uh, co stimulatory molecules that is the cd40 ligand binding to the ct40 and the toll like receptors so signals that are generating because of these interactions are up regulating the mhc class 1 production and this mhc class 1 production is now able to interact through co stimulatory molecules as well with the cytotoxic tls so you can have because of these interactions up regulation of another set of interactions and so you can have cross priming between cd4 plus t helper cells and the cytotoxic t lymphocytes so this is something that has been important and therefore dendritic cells kind of become a potential target for therapy so let us make the conclusions dendritic cells which are part of the innate immune system along with monocytes and macrophages are able to phagocytose antigens there are different types of dendritic cells in fact that are present dendritic cells due to their ability of antigen presentation are able to activate naive t cells to form different types of t cells based on the microenvironment and pathogen the dendritic cells are found to be an an equilibrium between its tolerogenic state and inflammatory state leading to different implications in diseased conditions due to their ability to transduce signals through surface receptors release cytokines or chemokines in different microenvironments they are located at peripheral locations in the body to discern presence of antigens and hence they are useful as innate immune cells and they become messengers for adaptive immunity so dendritic cells are professional antigen presenting cells with the advantage of being able to be a messenger between innate immunity and adaptive immunity and they are also potential therapeutic targets thank you